Good evening. Welcome to the road to the primary election in Boston on September 14, 2021. It will be a Tuesday. The local elections play a big role in shaping the U.S. democracy. Today, we're going to talk about politics with the candidate uh, for District 4, Dico Gibriel. How are you, Dico? Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I want to thank Telebell Talk TV, and I want to thank you, Raj, for having me tonight. I'm honored to be here with my Haitian brothers and sisters. Thank you for coming as well. Are you from Somalia? What year you came to the U.S.? Tell us about it. So I, I am from Somalia. I came to Boston July 23rd, 1991 mm -hmm. as a Somali refugee. Wow. So January of 91, there was a civil war in Somalia. And at that time, my family didn't have the means to leave right away. When civil war happens, people with you know financial stability leave right away. Uh, my father died when I was one year old. I am the youngest of six children. My brother passed away in the war, so now I'm the youngest of five children. My mom became head of the household in a country where women are not the head of the household. So we didn't leave right away, uh, and we didn't have the means to leave right away. But um, after four months of the war and the chaos, my family had a chance to come to Kenya. And in Kenya, we stayed in refugee camp to come to Boston. When you are refugee, it's not like uh, same as immigrants. You know, when you are refugee, whatever city takes you, that's where you end up. And the city will take you based on their resettlement funding. Mm -hmm. So I'm happy we ended up in Boston. Some of my family member ended up in San Diego, California, and they love it because of the weather. You know, Somalia was very hot. Uh, occasionally we drain, but mostly hot. We don't have any snow. We don't have a winter. So when we first got here, we didn't know English. Hmm. So we struggled, just like any other immigrant. We struggled with learning the language, the culture, custom here, navigating the complex system because we were in a refugee resettlement that was coming to us. And at that time, Somali community was new to the U.S. You know, we had Somali students who come here under, you know, student visa. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't as huge as the refugees who came. So schools didn't have Somali interpreter. It was hard to get Somali interpreter. We were relying on each other. You know, a little bit, if you speak a little bit of English, you know, I'm calling you to say, can you talk to so-and-so? How do I apply uh, DTA, transitional assistance programs? Um, so at the beginning, it was very difficult. I was 12 years old, 1991. So um, we lived in academy homes, which is uh, subsidized apartments at that time. And I was assigned to Washington Irving. And for the first time, I was scared having a school bus because we don't have that. I used to walk to school. Mm -hmm. and, and just, you know, my sister, I remember she took me the first day and I was very, very scared because I don't know the language, you know, and she left me there. Okay. Uh, what is the core value of your campaign? My core value of the campaign is giving back. This country took me as a refugee and took my family. You know, I'm not different from your journey to America. We share similar struggles. Um, I've been, so many people had helped me. And right now I work for the Mayor's Office of Economic Development. I'm a neighborhood business manager helping the districts that I'm running for to represent them on the council. So my core campaign is uplifting people's voice. It doesn't matter where you were yesterday. What matters is where you are today and where you want to go in the future. Interesting. We know we are approaching the school year mm -hmm. and we have uh, the Delta variant mm -hmm. causing trouble now in the U.S. Kids, yeah. If elected, what would you plan to uh, plan B to safely we open our BPS school in September 2021. So my plan is to uh, have our kids vaccinated so they will be, you know, um, safe for them to come to school. I want the teachers and the administrations to be vaccinated. Do you support vaccine mandate for everybody from the school system? I, I do, yes. Because okay. I, if I'm, I'm a mother of four kids, and mm -hmm. I'm a single mother of four kids, all my children went to Boston Public School. I have two kids in college, and I have one in high school one in middle school. If I'm sending my high school and my middle school daughters, I want them to be safe. So if we asking, you know, students to get vaccinated, I want to see administrations who take care of our children. We trust them with our kids eight hours a day. I want them to get vaccinated. Uh, f f the mayor, King Jenny, today said during the 
press conference mm -hmm. uh, said starting Monday, people will have to wear masks indoor. We see in New York City, the mayor de Blasio mm -hmm. asking businesses to ask people for vaccine passport. Mm -hmm. Would you support that in Boston if the mayor chose to run that route? I would support, um, if I get elected, I'm representing District 4. I'm okay. not representing the mayor. Mm -hmm. So whatever the people that put me there wants it, I will advocate for them. I'm their voices. City Council is liaison between the city government, the city municipal, and the residents. So if the residents feel safe to wear a mask or to get vaccinated, I'm for that too. Uh, what would be your plan? Because during COVID, small businesses, they, mm -hmm. they struggle, mm -hmm. especially the one and the minorities. Mm -hmm. What would be your plan to s help them survive in this economic crisis? Know the resources. I'm a neighborhood business manager. I'm the only candidate in District 4 that works for small businesses in the city of Boston. And I've been doing that three and a half years. I organized the first immigrant workshop series that the city offers. And we teach immigrants how to expand their business or how to, you know, um, establish a business in the city of Boston. What's the requirement? Because as you know, we immigrants, we like to rely on each other. You know, someone might call you and say, how do I get a business certificate instead of calling us? So I, I did that work. I bring this expertise of what businesses need. I am also a small business owner. I am the founder of the African Mall. If you go to 1127 Harrison Ave in New Bean Square, we have 13 businesses mm -hmm. owned by Africans. This is people who came here as a refugee. This is people who came here as an immigrant. We sometimes hear that immigrants come here to take the jobs. We don't take jobs. We create jobs. We are part of the economy. You know, if it wasn't us, the economy would not be where it is. So as a city council, I will bring that experience at the table. And I will make sure that every business, minorities, women-owned, immigrants, get the resources they have, that, that they're entitled to get from the city of Boston. Uh, During COVID, mm -hmm. we were processing. The city uh, of Boston gave uh, rental assistance to mm -hmm. businesses. Um, we gave um, reopening grants. A lot of businesses did not know. It doesn't matter if they're immigrant or born and raised in Boston. They didn't know. So we were out there risking ourselves and reaching out to business and saying, hey, here's the resources. You can apply. You will qualify. Let us know if you need help. As a city council, I will continue to do that. And if I get elected, I will serve in the small business committee. Uh, Boston, we see now we have another crisis of uh, homelessness and a lot of students some of them are homeless. Mm -hmm. They don't have any uh, room to live there in the shelter. Mm -hmm. So what would be your plan to solve that problem in Boston? So as an immigrant woman, I had multiple jobs. And one of those multiple jobs was at ABCD housing department, where for seven years I was a housing specialist. I was a uh, stabilization specialist. My role was to go to three different shelters in Boston and help family who reside the shelter get affordable housing. So at first hand, I understand the struggles. When I first came to America, I grew up in a subsidized apartment. Now I work for the city of Boston and I'm renter and I know how expensive it is to rent. You support rent control? I will definitely support rent control, but it's gonna take more than me. Our elected officials, state and city have to come together. But I, I see it first hand. You know, in order for me to keep my job, I have to live in Boston. And Boston is not affordable. It's not what it used to be. Mm -hmm. You know, 30 years ago when I arrived as a refugee, now it's very expensive. So as a city council, uh, currently right now, mm -hmm. developers is required to do 13% mm -hmm. affordable. I want to increase it to 33%. Because when I was a housing st uh, stabilization worker or when I worked at the shelters, a lot of people applied to one bedroom. You know, a developer will come in and say, we got 13 apartments. That 13 apartments, 400 families are applying. So what do we tell the rest? Why can we create more affordability? And then income guideline. When I walked in a shelter, I was very surprised at that time. You know, people who are in welfare, their only source of income is DTA, are getting denied because their income is too low. Either your income is too low or your income is too high. How are you going to work to uh, raise, uh, break that gap? Because that's a big problem for them. I want to revisit the income guideline. Mm -hmm. It's done by the state. But I want to be that coalition builder that brings people together and say, look, this is not working in our community. 
this is not working. And it's a leaf experience I had. It's not like people telling me, oh, you know, this is not working. No, I lived in this and it doesn't work. We need to revisit the income guideline. I met a woman who I was canvassing in her neighborhood. She got denied affordable housing because she makes $2,000 more than what they were asking. How can you sustain? She's a single mother of three. What can you do with $2,000 nowadays if you have three mouths to feed? Nothing. So as a city council, I am committing to increase the affordable units to 33%, and I want to revisit the income guideline. Those income guidelines, um, it's not working for us. Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk about public safety. We see uh, a crime rise in some cities in America. And last weekend in Boston, we have uh, more than five shootings for public safety. People have been complaining and uh, nowadays about the way things are going in terms of public safety. Mm -hmm. What will be your plan to help solve the crime in the city of Boston? Public safety is a dear and near to my heart. I left the war to come to America so I can be safe. Um, as I told you earlier, I lost the family members. I lost the brother to civil war. Mm -hmm. When we got here, we felt like, okay, finally, we are safe. July 5th this year, I experienced the unthinkable. I live on Harvard Street, and there was a shooting in Harvard Street. Mm -hmm. Five bullets came to my house. Three, two, three went to my living room. Two went to my neighbor's second floor. And she was taking a nap. And one of the below, uh, in her below, one of the bullet ended up. And she says, if I slept on my right side, I would be killed. So I'm a city employee. I'm a candidate. I, I, where is the resources? At that time, thank God nothing happened to us. But I was with my 12 years old. I just, it, it hit me hard. Because when I was 12, I left the war and a chaos. And my mom would teach me how to hide from bullet. And now I'm in America, I'm in Boston, and I'm teaching my daughter how to hide from bullet? Unacceptable, you know? Public safety is a dear and near to my heart. I will make sure youth opportunities is one of my key platform. Nobody picks up a gun and says, I want to be a gang, or nobody says, I want to blow myself, you know? There are situations that lead up to. The city of Boston, we have no programs from 18 to 26 years old. Because in this culture, 18 is adult. No, 18 still needs, you know, mentorship, still needs guardianship. As a city council, I want to see more youth opportunities in our neighborhood. Let's talk about the Green New Deal. Mm -hmm. It's coming to Boston. Mm -hmm. uh, how would you create jobs for Boston residents once you are elected in the Green New Deal? So once I get elected, one of my four platforms is jobs in our district. Mm -hmm. I'm an immigrant woman. You know, it wasn't always easy for me to get a job. I wanted to provide for my family, but I couldn't get a job. Even if I spoke Arabic and Somali, I'm like trilingual, it was hard for me to get a job. My first job search began at the welfare office when I was a young mom and I was on welfare. I asked them, teach me how to do a resume. Teach me how to do a cover letter. How do you handshake? In Somalia, we don't make eye contact. You know, in this country, if you don't make eye contact, they think you're lying. So all that I had to learn. I, I bring my struggle at the table and say, look, if I struggle to get a job, so many other people are struggling. Even the ones that were born here, generations, they're still struggling. As a city council, I will make sure that more jobs come to our neighborhoods, the talented existed. If and when I get elected, I am opening an office in the district. I want to meet where people at. Because coming from Africa, I didn't think I can walk into the city hall. I didn't think I can walk into the state house. A lot of people in our district, our district is very diverse, and a lot of people are immigrants. Back home, you can't get involved in the government. So we come here with that mindset. People doesn't even know that they can, they, they hire the elected officials. The elected officials work for us. All that I had to learn. So as your city council, I will make sure not just the new deal, I will make sure all jobs come through. Human service jobs. There's tons of it. They're looking for our language. It might be Spanish, Haitian Creole, Somali, Arabic, you name it. They want a multi-language people. It's just that nobody's preaching. You know, we need to create those bridges to bring more jobs in our district. Do you have a list of any areas you believe the city of Boston could improve upon if you get elected? Any areas do you think they need to work hard on to make it work for the people? Yes, our district. I'll give you an example. The shooting that happened to my, uh, my house. Mm -hmm. 
I'm fighting for resources. So we need, it doesn't matter if it happens to Beacon Street in downtown, or it happened to Harvard Street, or it happened to Mattapan Square. We need resources. I had to look for the trauma team. When I'm already in trauma, that's not acceptable. Mm -hmm. The area I want to improve is that communities of color, low-income communities, minority communities need the resources. Uh, let's uh, see, because uh, a lot of candidates, mm -hmm. when uh, the campaigning, mm -hmm. They always mentioning they're gonna work for the people, mm -hmm. and we see when some of them get inside, mm -hmm. they let them lead by bureaucracy. They mm -hmm. don't make the city hall for become a city for the people. Mm -hmm. What would you do to make it different? To make mm -hmm. a big difference? To make the city work for the for the people in Boston? I am hardworking woman. I am honest. I am the only one candidate in D four that's saying if she gets in. You will have an office in the neighborhood where you can come with all your issues. You know, I will make sure that I don't forget the people I work for. And that's what happens sometimes. You know, people who got elected, the title gets into their head. Mm -hmm. And then they forgot who put them there. My life, I began as a refugee. I came here with nothing. Like sometimes when you travel, you have a suitcase. For refugees, we have nothing. So I have that humble beginning where you know, I will always remain humble and, and be there for the people and know that this people is who I work for. Do you support having body camera on all uniform police? It's necessary, yes. Why? Because um, as you know, nowadays you never know what happens. And um, we are living in a digital world where everything is captured in you know, videos. I think it's win-win for both the law enforcement and, and us citizens. So I, I think mm -hmm. if, if, you know, it won't be my decision only, but as a, as a counselor or as a person, I do support that. There, there was a big scandal this year about uh, overtime and the police force. Mm -hmm. How would you address the theft, embezzlement, and overtime fraud that happens every year with the $80 million BPD overtime budget? Mm -hmm. What would you do for that? So right now, um, thank God, the city of Boston, we created accountability with the law enforcement. We have a department where at City Hall, they look at into um, what the police is doing. Mm -hmm. So I will work closely with that new department and I will make sure, I will make sure that taxpayers' money does not go into overtime that's necessary, unnecessary. Would you hire more minority police officers? Would you support that? Yes, definitely, definitely. I will give you an example um, when... Um, Boston bombing happened, our Muslim community was targeted. And I took a bold step and I reached out to the commissioner and I said, look, you know, our boys don't need to get harassed if they go to downtown. We didn't come here for, so we can have a life of criminal. We came here for public safety. And from that dialogue, we have the first MBTA, Somali police officers. So not only would I support uh, minority police officers, but I would support every language. I want to see more Haitian police officers. I want to see more Cape Verdean police officers. You know, I want to see more Somali. Any Anybody who's in the district, whatever language they speak, I want to see their kind. Because, you know, when you see your kind, you feel more safe. That You break that trust. So, as a city council, I, I, I will champion for more diversity in the Boston Police Department. All right, look at the camera and tell my viewers, the Asian American, why they should vote for you on September 14, 2021. Thank you so much for giving me the chance. My dear Haitian brothers and sisters, I am Diko Jabril. I am running for Boston City Council District 4. I am number four on the ballot. I will ask you to kindly vote for me because I am a hardworking woman. I am honest. I share your immigrant story and your struggles, and I will represent you on the council very well. Thank you. A journalist's job is to protect democracy, who play a big role. I report, should decide. My name is Erlich Dorilas. Have a good evening. See you next time.